Welcome to another episode of Final Cut Pro Help Live. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're going to talk about two topics. One is an update to the split screen effect. And then second, we'll go into the keyer and how to use that and utilize that. I've gotten a couple questions over the past few days uh, specifically about how to use that and, and hopefully we'll clear up some uh, issues that you were having and show some examples that'll help out. If not, if you're still having issues or you need some clarity on anything that we talk about today or any other topics about Final Cut Pro, don't hesitate to put it down in the comments. You can also reach out to us on Instagram or over at our website, awesomeguide.com slash support. On the support page, you'll find a, a couple options there and some troubleshooting tips. If you're having problems with Final Cut, that's a good place to start. So the first topic for today is this split screen effect. I just pushed out an update earlier this morning. We're now on version 1.4 of this split screen effect, which you can purchase over at anawesomeguide.com. But let me show you, this is the current split screen effect before the update. And if you don't know on the inspector here on the right side, you can double click up at the top of the inspector and that'll actually expand the inspector to take up the entire uh, length of your Final Cut interface. You can also then double click again to shrink that part of the uh, inspector. So if you don't want it to take up the entire length, but this is the, the current version, the 1.3 version. And we added some controls for positioning, the ability to put these titles and manually adjust where uh, different boxes are that are showing up on the screen. So if you want to nudge one over to the left or the right, you can do that here uh, with these various controls. Uh, what the other part of the split screen effect though that was kind of tricky for people is creating more custom grids. If you don't want just four videos like this or 16 or you know in very uh, specific spots, you wanted the ability to crop these in a little bit closer. And that's what we've added to the 1.4 update. So if you already have the split screen effect applied onto some clips, I'm gonna show you what happens when you update an effect. And, this is the split screen effect, but this happens for other ones as well. Notice at the bottom here, I do have the version number. This is version 1.3.1, and we're gonna update to 1.4. So I'm just gonna hide Final Cut, Command H to hide Final Cut. And then I'm gonna open up a Finder window and go into my Downloads folder here. So the, the key right now is I have not quit Final Cut just yet. And I, here's the zip file that comes when you get the update. You can double click on this, or if you purchase the, the plugin now, you should get this as well. Here's our app Final Cut Pro help folder. And to install this, we're gonna drag it into the effects. And this is very similar for other plugins as well. So I'm gonna do Command N to get a new Finder window. And in this new window, I'm gonna click on the downloads uh, shortcut there on my sidebar to go into, uh, or sorry, my motion templates folder. We already have downloads open. And in motion templates, this is an effect. So I'm gonna go into the effects folder and notice I already have a Final Cut Pro help folder. So I don't need to drag the new one in here. I just need to drag and replace the split screen effect. So in the downloads folder, I'll open up the Final Cut Pro help folder, grab split screen and drag it down into this split screen to replace it. And yes, if I did just drag the Final Cut Pro help folder, it would be fine. However, if you have additional plugins in this Final Cut Pro help folder, you would erase those and delete those, and that's not a good thing. So I've just replaced the older version and updated to the new one. If you do this, make sure that you have a backup of that older version before going through these steps. That way, if there's any problems, it's not a big deal. You can get back to it. Now I'm gonna return to Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna select one of my clips and notice here in the inspector at the bottom, this effect is still showing as version 1.3.1. So if you do this update, the reason I didn't quit it is just to show you that it hasn't actually pulled in that updated version yet. It doesn't know that's there. So we don't see the new controls. So it's important that when you update an effect or a plugin that you quit Final Cut. So I'm gonna do Command Q to quit Final Cut Pro and then we'll go back to it and I have it on my dock. I'll just click it from the dock down there to open Final Cut Pro back up. Now that we've uh, quit and relaunched Final Cut, I'm gonna select one of my uh, split screen effects here, or one of my clips that has the split screen effect. And then notice over in my inspector, if I look down at the bottom, this is already version 1.4. It did the update. 
I didn't have to apply the effect again. It already knows that it, there's a newer version and it's pulling that one in. And the controls that are new to this version are the crop controls here on the right side. So that's what we're gonna use. If you wanna use one of these crop controls, you just check this box that says crop on off and that'll enable these crop controls. Without them, if I drag these around, nothing really happens there. It moves around the text, but doesn't actually crop the video. So if I wanna crop the video, I'm gonna check the box. And then if I grab the left side and crop it, notice now we're cropping the box that's down here. You can still go up here and adjust the position of the box if you wanna move it somewhere else and make that adjustment. All right, so crop off, you can uncheck it. You can reset any of these back to their defaults and that'll bring them out. So as an example here, this at home, this top left clip, if I want that dog to crop out the extra space that's on the left and the right, I can check off the box to enable the crop and then I'll crop the left and the right. You can see how the text will stay inside that box as well. Uh, so that we see where that is. So then we can crop in nice and close. And then if we wanted to, we can use the position controls to adjust physically where this box is then positioned. Uh, this should also track if you have the outline turned on. Let me make a little thicker outline. We'll put a blue outline here. That outline should also stay around that box uh, as you use it. So that's what's updated in the split screen effect. Uh, as you're using this and, and working with this, if you notice anything that you wish this effect could do and you want it added in, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'd be happy to work on that and get effects and different things uh, included into this. Or if there's something completely different you're looking for, reach out. I might be able to give you some direction on that. So that is the split screen effect and what's new in version 1.4. If you've purchased this and you did not get an email uh, with the updated version, reach out to me. You might not have subscribed to those emails. Just send one to finalcutprohelp at me.com. Uh, send it from the email that you used to, to purchase the plugin. That way I can verify you have it and we'll get you that updated version uh, ready to go. All right, and then the second topic I wanted to talk about in today's episode is around the keyer and what it is, why you would use it, and we'll use it in some examples. So let me just show it right off the bat. I'm gonna do Command A to select all my clips and hit the delete key. Now we have an empty project. I'll use Command Zero to re reset the interface back to the default. So again, Command Zero will reset that interface. And then if we're doing a green screen or uh, trying to key out a color, usually it's either gonna be a blue or a green background. That's the most common colors to use because it won't interfere with your subject. You're gonna add that clip to your project. And I'm doing it here on the primary storyline. You can do it on the primary storyline or it can be a connected clip, either or, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna then go into the effects browser using command five to show the effects browser here. And under the category on the left side, there's a category called keying. And there's two keyers in here, one just called keyer and another one called luma keyer. Uh, in this video, we're gonna talk specifically about the keyer. And what the keyer is designed to do is remove color. It's creating a key or basically a selection of color that it's gonna remove from the clip you add it to. So in this case, my sample clip here has a green background. I want to remove that color. So I'm gonna use the keyer. A side note about the Luma keyer, you can use that one to remove uh, more brightness values uh, or your kind of light and dark. So sometimes if you wanna remove a white or a black color from a clip, you can use the Luma keyer to do that. But usually you're gonna have a color. That's the, the most common thing. So I'm just gonna drag my keyer effect onto the green screen clip. Again, you wanna drag it onto the clip that you're removing the color from. And this one had a pretty well lit background and subject. So the background gets removed uh, almost perfectly. You can go into the inspector to uh, see the keyer and make adjustments to it. And before I do that, I am gonna add a background to this clip. So let me go into my backgrounds here under the titles and generators sidebar. There's a backgrounds category and you can add in different backgrounds here. We'll just add this blobs one because it's very colorful and should be very obvious what's back there. And notice I dragged that clip below the clip that we keyed. So if it's a background, it goes down, it goes underneath the other clips. That's usually where you're gonna place your backgrounds. If you dragged it on top of or above the other clip, you could see how the blobs cover her up. 
We don't want that. We want it below the other clip, so make sure it's down there. And then clicking back on the green screen clip, we'll go into the inspector here and make some changes to it. So let's zoom into it just so it's a little bit easier to see here. And this here has a couple options uh, for making adjustments to it. You'll see this sample color box and edges. This is the first place I'd recommend starting for the majority of uh, keying because this allows you to select a sample color, meaning what color should we actually remove and refine edges to your clip. Before you do that, there's this view option down here. You can use this one to change what you're seeing in the uh, actual viewer here on the left. So this first one is what we're viewing right now, which is the composite of both the backgrounds and the, the subject. You can click on the middle one to view the mat, and this one will actually show you in white what's being or what's remaining, and in black what's being removed. And then the, the third option here shows you your original clip. So this is without any of the color removed. And showing the original can be helpful because now we can click on the sample color box and then click and drag on this green that we're trying to remove. And each time you use a sample color, you can add multiple ones. It's going to remove more and more of that green color that's back there. Okay. Now this is something where you might want to go back to your various views here and see things like the mat. Because when I'm viewing the mat, I, I can see at the lower right and left corners, there's a little bit of, of white down there that's not being removed. So I might get my sample color and click and drag over those corners to make sure that those are removed. And now notice here, just by doing it on the right side, it also removed what's over on the left side as well. So that's a nice way to switch between these different views to see what's actually being removed from the color. All right, so we've selected our sample color. If you want, you can also click on edges and click and drag across a spot where there is an edge. And what this does is, is helps the key understand where edges of your subject are. So you can click and drag as far out as you want with these, these bars here, um, but this will help refine your edge. You can then click and drag the little line that's in the, the middle there uh, to uh, change how the uh, edge is defined. So you can see as I bring it down, less of this subject is being removed uh, versus going up. So we want to make that line kind of parallel with the edge that you're uh, going up against there. All right, so that's creating our key. Uh, if we see the edge here, you can see there's the the kind of final key there. It actually looks pretty pretty good just with those changes uh, on there. Just so you know. If you want uh, to do this a little bit quicker here in the viewer, you can hold the shift key and drag, and this will add a sample color box. So instead of having to go over here and click sample color, then make a box, hold shift, and then click and drag across to create one of those uh, sample boxes. You can also hold the command key to click and drag and make another edge. So that'll allow you to make edges very quickly if you're going across to a big subject there. Uh, with a lot of edges that you're trying to define, you could do that using the command key. And any of these, if you want to delete them, just hold down the option key and click on either an edge or you can click on the edge of one of these boxes to remove that as well. So if you've added too many uh, items there or you're kind of experimenting with those, you can use those shortcuts, either shift to add a sample color, command to add an edge, and uh, uh, the option key and clicking on any of those to delete them. All right, so there's our, our finished key there, and that looks pretty good. You can adjust uh, the other controls there if you want to, to refine it even further. But if this is uh, acceptable, then you're good to go. If you have a number of these clips that have the same key, the lighting's all the same, you can now use Command-C to copy that clip, and then use Shift-Command-V to paste that keyer effect on the other clips that you've um, uh, got there. And that'll allow you to save a lot of time. You don't have to reset all these settings in here. All right, so that was an example of using the keyer and, and how you would use that. Uh, let me delete these clips. And now we'll go into a second example of a, of a key that's maybe not as well done, as well lit here. This is also a very compressed file. Uh, that, that one of you have sent in to me. And uh, this is a great one to use as an example because 
this clip uh, has a lot of the green screen showing up in the reflection of this piano. So this is a much trickier clip to key out the color that's there, and we're not gonna be able to do it using just the keyer. We're gonna have to get some masks involved as well. But let's go through those steps. I've added the clip. I'm gonna go and add my background. We'll use that same blobs clip just so you can see what the background is. You can certainly add any background that you want here. If we wanted to put a stage back here, or maybe this has like an out, outside or a, a skyline in the background, you could certainly put any background you want back there. Uh, but now that I have my blobs background in there with my clip selected, I'll double click on the keyer to add in that keyer. And there's the keyer on its own without any other adjustments made to it. And you can see it doesn't look good. We see uh, most of the piano here at the top being removed. Even the, the front here is being removed. Uh, there's just a lot of issues with this. And it could be somewhat related to the compression of this clip. But a lot of it's related to the reflection that's happening on the piano. And we don't want that. So with the keyer added... We can go and do the same thing we did before with selecting the sample color and marking some edges. And to do that, it might be more helpful to see the original clip. So I'll click that original button, and then we'll grab some of these sample areas here of the green screen. And even the lighting here, notice how light the green screen is on the right side, whereas on the left side, it's a little bit darker green. It might be hard to see over the YouTube stream, but this is not a very uniformed green background. There's a lot of wrinkles in that screen, and that's gonna cause more issues here with the keyer. So again, the best thing you can do with this is to light everything uh, accurately so that you don't have all of these different changes in the green. But if you do, make sure you add sample colors for those various areas. And then we can go back and view their completed one. We can even see the mat to see some of these edges are looking pretty good, but other ones are not. So after adding a, a couple sample colors there, we might go in and add some edges, which I'll see the original clip, clip, click on edges, and now we can click and drag where these edges are uh, here. And these are gonna be pretty tricky edges because of the way that the color is on here. So that d using an edge may not actually help us uh, gain anything in this case. So again, the shortcut, you can hold option and click on an edge to get rid of it. Maybe we'll go and add another one, try it over here with the edge of this piano. Notice how much better this edge looks now that we added an edges option. So you can see that's where it works really well. And just like I was shown earlier, you can drag this little edge to uh, adjust how that works. I can hold the option key and click on it to remove it. Go back to the original here to see that. However, in this case, I know that the green reflection that's on the top of this piano is just too much for the keyer really to uh, get all of it just in those couple sample color options. So you can go through these additional controls and make more adjustments to the color, uh, or to the keyer here, to bring in some more color from the piano. So again, I'll go back to my, uh, my mat just so I can see this because it's very clear what happening with the white being removed and the black, sorry, black being removed and the white being kept. If I increase some of this fill holes, notice how it's filling in this keyer. So before fill holes, we saw down here, there's a little bit of space on the front of the piano and the edges uh, are faded. So fill holes actually fills in some of that and adds some of that back. If we look at our final completed one, notice how some of that piano is coming back. So that may be a look that you want to use there and it might help out. We can then change our edge distance, which you can see how that's making adjustments to the keyer. And then you have your spill level as well. The spill level, I'm gonna take it all the way down to the left. Notice how we have this green on the top of the piano. The keyer is actually trying to balance that color so that it's more accurate and remove that color cast that we saw. We see it on the floor as well being reflected. And this is where lighting the scene uh, can help remove some of this so you don't have to do it in here in post. However, in this case with this clip, it's just really hard to get a reflective piano not to show that greed. So we increase that spill level and it tries to balance out or remove that green cast. That's what the spill level is doing. Uh, there's an invert checkbox. You can invert the key if you wanted to for some reason. 
We're not going to do that right here. And then we have some additional controls here for color selection, matte tools, spill suppression, all these options here that go into way more advanced controls that might help out with your key. So you can, you can definitely go in here and make adjustments to it. Um, and for example, you have your chroma here that you can use and adjust this, and this might help out with how it's keying out specific colors where the box and what we were selecting up here didn't work. You can do it more manually with these additional controls that are here. All of these are documented in the Final Cut Pro documentation. Just go up to the help menu, go into Final Cut Pro help, and you can do a search for the keyer and find each one of those controls uh, pretty well detailed in here. So don't hesitate to go in there and, and look those up uh, because it explains these in, in way greater detail. One of the other thing that's kind of cool about the keyer is like anything we, we do in Final Cut with animation, you can add keyframes to the keyer and that's done automatically. So if you've made your adjustment to your, your frame here, you can adjust it in the timeline, go to a different frame and then add more sample boxes and edges. And notice now we have a jump to sample box here. This jump to sample allows you to jump between those two sample colors. And those are actually keyframes that'll change over time. So don't feel like you're stuck with just one frame of the keyer. You can add multiple ones and then jump between uh, those keyed out spots. Okay, so just to summarize up to this point, we've added the clip, we've added the keyer to that clip, and then we use the sample color and the edges to remove uh, a color. Basically, we keyed out that color. All right. One other tip about this, if the automatic keyer didn't do what you want it to do, you can change this strength slider down to zero and then add sample color and edges. And this will allow you to manually select and override what the keyer did automatically. So let me delete this keyer. I'll show you what, it, what I mean. If I go and add this keyer, because I have a green background, it did a great job. However, if that wasn't accurate, if it wasn't removing the right color, change this strength down to zero. Notice now nothing's removed. And now you can go in with sample color and choose what colors you want to remove. And you can do that either using the uh, click on the box and add additional sample colors, or in this case, I can hold shift and select some colors uh, to be removed. All right, so that's what that strength box does. Make sure to turn that down to zero before you do anything else, and then add your sample color boxes and edges uh, if the initial key did not work for you. All right, so hopefully that makes sense with the keyer and using that. You can go into the additional controls here to learn more. But if you have a, a surface like we do here with this piano where the keyer, it did an okay job, but it, it didn't fill in the top of the piano just because it's too reflective, this is where we're gonna have to add a mask to our clips here and, uh, and essentially go in and manually mask out the spots that we want. So I'm gonna select my clip on the timeline. I'm gonna hold the option key on the keyboard and drag this up. And that makes a copy of that clip. Make sure you drag it straight up. If you move it somewhere else in time, you're going to have uh, sync issues. But now that I have that copied version of the clip, I can select that copy and we're going to add the draw mask effect. So go into your effects browser. You can use command five. If you don't see it, that'll bring up the effects browser. Click on the masks category and then add draw mask to the top clip that you added in. We did a whole uh, video on masking. We now have our little uh, pen tool so I can create a mask around the piano. And specifically, I'm creating a mask around the uh, spots that I don't uh, see here around this top spot of it. So I might have to go in my composite and view the original to see where that edge actually is. You know, kind of comes down here. And with masking, you can uh, click and drag to create a rounded or bezier uh, curve there if you want to. Um, don't hesitate to use that feature. And then when you click on the first point, it'll close that mask and uh, yeah, create the, essentially create the mask around there. You can click on any of these points to make adjustments to them. You can hold option and click on the line if you need to add a point, or you can right click on a point and change it to smooth, 
which will give you those uh, handles that you can use to make adjustments. So that's just an overview of masking. We're making a mask around this top version of this clip here. And then we're gonna go in and adjust this mask, which you can do by adding uh, feathered edges. And this is gonna be in your effects browser. You can hit the hide button next to the keyer and there's our draw mask. So we can adjust this mask by feathering the edges, which will smooth out the uh, kind of abrupt ending that happens up at the top here uh, with the piano. Don't hesitate to adjust your mask using the inspector. And then what we can go in and do is copy this mask that we've created down to our first clip. So I can select this, I can do Command uh, C with the clip and then Shift Command V to paste attributes onto that other clip. And I'm just gonna paste my draw mask on there with it. Now you can see right now with both of these masks, uh, they're identical so we, don't see the, uh, the initial piano that's there. So on my second clip down here, I'm actually gonna invert the mask because I do wanna keep everything that's down here and I might adjust this so that there's overlap in those two masks. But the goal of this second mask here is to make it so that the top clip does all the work for this top area of the piano. So with my top clip selected here, uh, I can certainly feather the edge if I want to, uh, to make the adjustment. But notice how, let me zoom in here. Notice how at the top left of the piano here, see how there's this weird edge hanging off? That's what the mask of the bottom clip's gonna do. So I can change this to mask that out by expanding the mask of the lower clip so that we don't see that. And then I'll do Shift Z with my viewer selected here to zoom out. And we can expand each of these two with that mask so that we don't see all those additional edges. Okay. So now my top clip selected. We can go into the keyer here. I can uncheck this to see the before and after. It doesn't seem like it's uh, removing and doing my, my spill level change here. So we'll have to check that and see where that's coming from. Cause this looks good. Yeah, the bottom of the piano looks pretty good, but the top of the piano, that spill suppression is not working. So I'm gonna remove this keyer and just re-add it. Let's see what's happening with that one. Go into keyer, drag that keyer on. I'm gonna reset this by bringing it down to zero. We might have to do a color correction on this. Get our sample color back here. So yeah, we can see that green on there it really doesn't look that good. Fill in the holes, piano. But notice how much better this edge looks going across the piano. So that looks pretty good, but the color itself is not being removed on here. Uh, so that's what looks a little weird. And that's our, usually our spill suppressor. Uh, doesn't seem to be going in and making that change. Here, up here. Yeah, it's still happening. So we can go back into the controls. We have our uh, color selection. This is what color is being removed. Our matte tools. One of these is doing it with the, uh, with the color on there. But if it's not doing exactly what I want to do, I can also go into our color inspector and make adjustments to it there and actually do a color correction. But for right now, uh, this looks pretty good as far as creating the background on there for the initial key that I want to remove and get that color out there. Hopefully that makes sense with adding the mask to the second clip to be able to have a little bit more control on what colors are being removed when you do add that keyer. The next thing is once you've done that, these two clips really should stay together. So I might go in and select these clips and group them into a compound clip. You can do that using option G and name your clip, which one this one is, and then click on OK, and that'll group them together. So you can adjust this and then move this around as one clip. I can also double click on this clip to open that compound clip. Both of these have audio, so you probably wanna take one of these clips and just lower that audio so that you only hear one version of what's in there. And then you can use the timeline history button to go back to your entire project. Uh, don't hesitate to play around with this. Compound clips, you can now apply effects and filters to this compound clip that'll impact the entire clip itself. So 
You could even go in here and add an additional keyer or other filters and effects and it's applying to your new clip that's here. So we might go in here and uh, fill in holes and, and take out different uh, colors, different things that are in here. You can go and do mess with that and, and, um, and create some pretty cool effects using the compound clips. All right, so that's what I wanted to show in this version of Final Cut Pro Help Live. Hopefully that helps out and gives you some direction on where to go. The most important thing with the keyer is lighting. If you saw in the first example, this clip was much, much uh, more uniform as far as the background goes. So when we're trying to uh, key it out, we're able to add that clip, double click on the keyer, and almost without doing any other work, it, it matted everything out correctly, or, or keyed everything out correctly, and remove that color. And just with a few simple changes by selecting our view, our matte view, we can add this sample color for the spots that didn't get removed. And really that might be the only change we need to make to this one uh, to get that background removed uh, or get that uh, key set so that we can put in a background here and um, yeah, whatever you want to do with that that clip there. So, um, yeah, that's what I got for you today. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them down in the chat. Send me an email, FinalCutProHelp at me.com. And we'll be back with another episode soon. We're working on some more videos and some more tutorials for you uh, and uh, some more content. So have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone.